Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Understanding Medical Words. This is Lecture C, Body Organization. In this lecture, we will discuss ways to describe the body in relation to cell or tissue types, body systems, and body cavities, as well as reviewing directional terms. The objectives for this unit, Understanding Medical Words, are to discuss the four parts of medical terms, recognize word roots and combining forms, identify the most common prefixes and suffixes, describe the anatomical positions, define the body planes, identify regions of the body, define directional and positional terms, Build, divide, spell, and pronounce common medical words. The body is composed of different types of cells. The cells come together to form tissues. A tissue is formed when like cells are grouped together and function together to perform a specific activity. The body has four types of cells. Each cell type groups together to form a type of tissue. Connective tissue supports and protects the body structure. Bones, ligaments, and tendons are forms of connective tissue. Epithelial tissue covers surfaces inside and outside the body. The skin, the lining of the stomach, and the lining of the intestines are examples of epithelial tissue. Muscle tissue helps the body move. Skeletal muscles are one example of muscle tissue. Nervous tissue carries messages from the brain and spinal column and allows information to be sent between the brain and the rest of the body through a network of nerves. Cells form into tissues, tissues form into organs, and organs form into systems. A system is composed of several organs functioning together in a coordinated manner. The body is divided into various systems. These include the integumentary system, includes the skin, hair, nails, sweat, and oil glands. It receives sensory information for the sensations of pain, touch, and temperature. It protects the internal organs from infection and trauma and regulates body temperature by sweating. The musculoskeletal system includes muscles, bones, and cartilage. It supports the body and produces body movement. And the cardiovascular system includes the heart and blood vessels. It pumps blood throughout the body to transport nutrients, oxygen, and wastes. The respiratory system includes the lungs and airways. It obtains oxygen and removes carbon dioxide from the body. The nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. It receives information from the body relating to the senses, including pain, touch, temperature, and body position. It coordinates body movement and stores and interprets memory and emotion. The urinary system includes the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. Its function relates to excreting urine and waste products.
The female reproductive system includes the ovaries, vagina, fallopian tubes, uterus, and mammary glands. This system secretes hormones, produces ova. You may remember from a previous lecture that the plural of the Latin word for egg, ovum, is ova, and regulates menstruation, pregnancy, and milk production from the breasts. The male reproductive system includes the testes, penis, prostate gland, vas deferens, and seminal vesicles. This system secretes hormones and produces sperm. Sometimes these two systems are combined and referred to generally as the reproductive system. Other systems include the blood system, the lymphatic system, the digestive system, and the endocrine system. The blood system includes the blood and all components. The function of this system is to transport oxygen, protect against pathogens, and control bleeding. The lymphatic and immune system includes the lymph, lymph glands, and lymphatic vessels. This system is key in recognizing and destroying disease-causing organisms and abnormal cells. The digestive system includes all organs of digestion and excretion, such as the esophagus, stomach, intestines, etc. It digests food, absorbs nutrients into the blood, and excretes undigested wastes. It receives sensory information for the sense of taste. The endocrine system includes all of the various hormone glands, such as the pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid glands. These glands produce and secrete hormones into the blood that, in turn, direct other body organs. And finally, the last system is the sensory system. This system includes the eyes, ears, and all body parts related to the five senses of seeing, smelling, hearing, tasting, and feeling. Some parts of this system may be included within other body systems, but the primary components of this system are the eyes and ears. There are four major body cavities. A cavity is a hollow space and is surrounded by bones or muscles that support and protect the organs and structures within the cavity. The four body cavities are the cranial cavity, which contains the brain, the spinal cavity, which contains spinal cord, the thoracic cavity, which contains the heart, lungs, and associated structures the abdominal-pelvic cavity, which contains digestive, excretory, and reproductive organs and structures. Your study of terminology in healthcare would be incomplete unless you also learn the following commonly used directional terms. These terms help to describe the location of one structure, organ, or system in relation to another. They also assist in discussing the position or location of the patient's complaint. Directional terms include anterior or ventral, which indicates the front of the body. In contrast, posterior or dorsal indicates the back of the body. Inferior is below another structure or moving more toward the feet, while superior means something is above another structure or moving more toward the head. Lateral 
means alongside another structure. And medial refers to the middle or near the middle of the body or structure. Additional directional terms include proximal, which means located near the trunk or point of attachment to the body. Distal means something is located away from the trunk or point of attachment to the body. Supine refers to the body's position when you are lying on your spine with your face pointing upward. Prone, on the other hand, refers to lying on your stomach with your face pointing down. As you have seen, there are many directional terms that can be used to describe one body position in relation to another. The directional terms are illustrated for you here. So, let's see how these terms might be used. Imagine that a dead body is discovered lying in the prone position in an alleyway. Which of the following observations can you make without moving the body? Puncture wound below the navel, laceration in the pectoral region, crush injury to sternum, gunshot wound to right buttock. The correct answer is a gunshot wound to right buttock. Remember that prone means lying face down. The other observations would be impossible to make unless the victim was supine or face up. This concludes Lecture C of Understanding Medical Words. In summary, we covered different tissue types, the body cavities, and directional and positional terms.